Amen. Amen. It's good to be in Bible study. Saturday, 630, and God is in this place. Amen. Grateful for everybody who's made it out. And hey, uh, we got to invite more folks. It can't just be us. Because it's not, we're not a little club, you know. <laughs> now wait a minute, don't get it twisted. I love that we. I, I, I was just sitting here listening to the sisters talking. I love that we have a family. I love that we have friends that we can sit and fellowship with. But we've got a good God, and we can't just keep him to ourselves. <laughs> we got to share him with everybody and let the world know. My wife reminded me, where is Ross? Where is uh? Uh, Alvina. They used to come and sit with us. Where are they? Buddha comes in here and hit and miss and, and Arthur. But we want everybody to come to Bible study. This is the good stuff. Right. This is where we get to dig in and learn more about our Lord and Savior. So mm -hmm. encourage folks to come and be a part. Amen. We're continuing the book of Acts. We just finished uh, the great uh, story of the eunuch. And now we're going into the conversion of Saul. And God's going to do some great things with him. Amen. Amen. Sister Rosie, would you pray for our Bible study, please? Father, we come before you, praise this Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for everything that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for everything you have come, that it has come our way, Lord. We just praise you today. Yes. We just are completely grateful to you, Lord, and we just we're yeah. asking you, Lord, to open our ears and to help our pastor to give us your word, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Acts chapter nine, beginning to read at verse one. We're going to read one through nine. Sister Hicks, you only have half a coat on. Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him, desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was, there, he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Wow. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think about the power of God and his presence. But you know, there are a lot of people that are just like this man, Saul, who are so ill-informed or misinformed that they think that they're doing God's judgment, doing God's bidding, but they're actually doing the opposite. Yeah, I got to tear down this uh, these little, those little churches, they, they need, either need to be a part of us or they need to go. 
You see people say things like that. Well, if you're not a part of the mega church, if you're not a part of our drive, then you're not a Christian. But Jesus said, if they're not against me, they're for me. But we see people who, who claim the name of Christ actually rebelling against other Christians. And they say, well, I'm doing right. Because they don't go to my church. They don't listen to my teaching. How many know the devil's a liar? But I thank God that God is able to put us on the right path. Mm -hmm. I like this. He says, and as he was on the way, he, he was looking for others that he might find any of this way. Which way? <laughs> the right way. The right way. <laughs> Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. But he wanted to find anybody that was trying to follow this teaching, follow this doctrine. And again, it's so, it's so hard for us to get past us. This is what I believe. This is what I see. And so you should do what I saw. This is how God dealt with me. And so this is, you got to read the word. Did you hear what I said? Amen. We need the truth of the gospel. You need to pray and ask God to open your eyes to the truth. That you might know which way to go. Saul, when Jesus stopped and said, what would thou have me to do? All we have to do is ask God. Yes. He'll show us the right way. He'll lead us in that path that we need to go. And sometimes we even, even as Christians, find ourselves fight, fighting difficult situations. Things that we start to question in our hearts. And we have to also realize, we don't know everything. But Jesus does. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He knows. He knows. And so, he, he was like, he said he heard from the just one. The just one. Sister Tensio, read Acts 22, <coughs> verse 14. Acts 22, 14. And he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will. And see that just one, and should us hear the voice of his mouth. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we don't need another preacher. <laughs> we don't need another, oh, I, I, I've heard a message from on high. An angel came and gave me a seat. We need the word of God. Amen. We need the truth. I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. Why? Because I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to follow the doctrine that he teaches. And anybody that teaches anything else, the word of God says, let them be accursed. <laughs> there, there is no other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And we who are Christians have to cling to these doctrines. And so often people are lured by the popularity, by the crowds. Well, well, everybody else is going this way. Everything is shifted. We should shift the law. But Christ says, this is the way. Walk ye in this. We don't have to follow the world. He's literally showing us. He saw the just one. And how, how amazing it is to have the Lord open our eyes for the first time and see the truth. Yes. Like I said, I walked outside and I could literally see the church, the trees worshiping God. I never saw that before. I never even imagined that. But the God that we serve literally opened my eyes and it felt so good. He's real. Amen. Did you see God? No. But I saw his works. Yeah. And I experienced his power. 
It is God who opens our eyes to reveal. He literally opened the veil so that we can see the love of God. We can experience his grace and his mercy. And God is so good to us. I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Christ's discovery of himself to the poor souls who are humble, who come to him and say, I want that. Does anybody want that? <laughs> God, show me the way. Because I've been lost. I'm, I don't want to continue to uh, wallow in darkness. I don't want to continue. He, he's literally, he set his sins down in order before him. He said, isn't it hard to kick against the pricks? Mm. We think we're doing good, but literally everything we're doing, it is a fight. It's a struggle. Why? Because we're not in the will of God. Mm. But Sister Maria Vera, she was saying... It's amazing how God just works everything out. Yes, he does. We just have to be faithful. Yes. Things that we don't understand, God does. Exactly. Things that we don't, we don't, we can't fully comprehend, God already knows. And so what God is doing now is opening our eyes so we can see. So we can see that I don't know the answers. But I'm going to follow him. I don't know the answers. But he's showing me great things. Saul, who would later be called Paul, was so zealous for his Jewish beliefs that he began to persecute a campaign to, uh, to go against those people that were walking in that way. Brothers and sisters, we can't get so holy that we turn against God's people? <laughs> we think we're doing something. But as he was traveling on that road to Damascus, pursuing Christians, he was confronted with the risen Christ and brought face to face with the truth of God's gospel. You know, when we come face to face with the truth of the gospel, it's life changing. Amen. Because now we have to make a choice. Yes. And like we discussed last week, getting people to the altar is that break that they need, that breakthrough that they need. It's their Damascus experience. Because for so long they said, well, I'm good right here. I'm good right here. But let them get to that altar. Let them get to that place where God begins to deal with them and he begins to open their eyes for the first time and show them their sins and they begin to say, oh man, I need that. And then they begin to open up and they begin to say, what would y'all have me to do? Paul's talking about this experience, this new life in Christ. And there's so many scriptures that we could go back and forth. But I think about this. At the center of this wonderful experience was Jesus Christ. You see, Paul didn't see a vision. He saw Christ. He wasn't in a dream in the days, though the men that were with him, they all they heard was like thunder. It's like, oh my God, this was this must, we must have been struck by lightning because it was so bright. And then they heard this rumbling, and it, it was like, you know why? Unbelief. Mm -hmm. yes. But Christ was there. And you know, I think about that. How many times has Christ shown up in our lives and we were too blind to see? But like sister said, all we got to do is wait on God. He's going to bring us through this. Amen. All we have to do is wait. God is going to make a way. Yeah. Things that we don't, un he understands what he's doing. Yeah. He's going to do this. Saul was... Pursuing heretics, that's what he thought. I'm getting rid of these people that's slandering our religion, that's, um, that's destroying 
our faith. But he was literally persecuting Jesus Christ himself. And anyone who persecutes believers today is also a guilty of persecuting Christ. And who wants to fight against God? They said, if God be for us, who could be against us? So if God, if we are against God, what, what makes us think we could win? What, 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 what weapon do we think we're going to use? We can't win. He said, isn't it hard to kick against the pricks? <laughs> it's going to school uphill both ways. <laughs> we can't win. That's what it is. He said, I'm going to do this. And I think about that. We find ourselves looking at a lot of people, especially in the world that we live in today. Come on, what's that guy's name? Oh, he changed his name, whatever. Kanye. West, Kanye West, or whatever, Kanye. whatever his name is. He, he now is spitting fire against the Jewish nation? Yes. What? Where'd that come from? No, fear. <laughs> no, you know, she said he has no fear, but I think about it. I think about it. I re where's Ken? I read the book. In these last days, people are just going to be stupid. Yeah. They have lost their mind. So in order for me to get fame and fortune, I'm going to talk against the people of God? And then he posted a, 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 a something and, and Fox News reported that he uh, he lost so many billion dollars in one day because of his stupid mouth. Pride is a killer. Ignorance is a killer. Yes. But going up against God, hmm. there's no words I can use to describe that. He thought he was pursuing, but literally he was pursuing Christ. And, and I, I don't know, I just don't want to be found guilty of standing against God and his people. So Hicks is trying to help you out, Reverend Atencio. Sister, rub him, hook him up. <laughs> Brother Jim, can you go to Matthew 25? Matthew 25, verse 40. Okay. Hold on. Let's take some minutes. Yes, sir. This is not a law. What had happened was. <laughs> 25 and 40. Hold on. You there yet? No. All right. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, you go to, while you're going to 40, 45, go to 45. Uh, Rosie, read 40 for me, please. Say, Acts 20. And the no. Jews answered and say unto them, Verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you have come, as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Is that the one? Yes, ma'am. Here, Jesus is speaking. These letters are in red in, in my Bible. The king shall answer and say, Verily I say unto you, as much as you have done it unto the least of one of these, you have done it unto my brethren. You have done it unto me. If you do it to them, you're hurting me. If you're attacking God's church, you're attacking God himself. And the same when we think about it, how God wants us to understand we are one. So if Sister Hicks is hurting, 
We don't have any room to rejoice. Why? Because who here is excited when we chop off our hand? <laughs> you know, our hand just got chopped off. We're like, oh, praise God, I've been tired of that hand. I'm glad it's gone. We wouldn't do that. God wants us to understand when you attack a part, you're attacking the whole. Go to 45, Jim. Same chapter. Okay. Let me just read what she read because it says the same thing. Yes, sir. Oh, it does? <laughs> Whatever you did, you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Exactly. He said, if you attack them, you're guilty. And if you fail to help them, you're just as guilty. So you might not attack Sister Hicks, but you didn't help her? What? Who, who wouldn't help Christ? Who, who if they saw, if, if, remember he said, if you, if you can't help the people that you see, how are you going to tell me that you love me? You've never even seen me. These are, these are the things that the world needs to really wake up and understand. When, when Christ is revealed to us, we, we have to come to the understanding that everything has changed. Our way of thinking, our way of believing, our way of understanding is even clearer now. All right. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 through 22. Who's ready? Who's ready? I believe it's Okay. <coughs> 10 to 22. Yes, sir. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judas, for a monk called Saul, of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, verse 12. And mm -hmm. hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, <clears throat> Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to, blind, to bind all that call on my name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, put his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee, in the way as thou camest, has sent to thee, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as if it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, hmm. that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look at the power of God. Look at God moving and showing, showing everybody. But again, like I said, we got to be careful. We got to be careful 
and stay humble and listen to the voice of God. Mm. Because God called Ananias. And I like this. And Ananias immediately responded. We got to always respond. We got to be ready to say, here my Lord. But he responded out of the flesh when God told him what he wanted him to do. How, how many of us have subdued our flesh completely? Amen. We haven't. Our flesh is always there, always remind us, hey, that's scary. <laughs> Are you crazy? I'm not doing that. Do you know, God, um, Lord, can we talk for a second sidebar? You know, <laughs> do, you, do you know who that dude is? He's going around killing people. Did, look, one chapter back, one chapter back. They killed that man. Stephen, they stoned him. All because he told them the truth? You want me to go see this man? He's got papers. He's having people locked up for believing in you. Go ahead, sis. It's funny because we're telling God that like, you don't know what he's doing. Right, right. God, God, obviously you made a mistake. This, this is a bad dude. This is a bad dude. But remember, when you were the bad dude. Remember when you were in opposition to the things of God. There was nothing holy about us. Can I get a witness? <laughs> there was nothing righteous about us. We had our own righteousness, but we didn't have the righteousness of God. And so this man said, Lord, I'm just making sure you know. This is a bad, 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 bad man. But God said, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel. Chosen unto me. <laughs> what a privilege it is to be chosen of God. Amen. But a lot of people think it's going to always be easy. I'm chosen of God. As soon as they hit a bump the road, woe is me, God has forsaken me. He said, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, listen, and kings. He might get popular, right? And the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer. So to be a Christian, we might have to suffer. We're going we're gonna to go through. He says, in this world, we're going to face tribulations. But be of good cheer. Amen. God has already overcome. So this man who was terrorizing the Christians, now God was going to deliver him and make him a Christian. But he needs to know that there's going to be a lot of suffering in this conversion. But how many would rather suffer for Christ than live in the pleasures of this world? He says there is pleasure in sin for a season. But the end result is death. The end result is the loss of life. And I think about this. A lot of people don't understand that. This, we're going to die in sin. Yeah, but we had a good time. I never forget those officers. We were in roll call. We were just sitting around. Everybody was talking and carrying on. And, and they knew that I was a Christian. And I was sitting in, in the back, you know, off. Not, not in the mix of the foolishness, but I had my coffee just sipping and listening. They said, that's all right. One guy was looking straight, straight in my face. I know I'm going to hell, but when I get there, we're going to have a party. And that's the deceit that the devil has given them. They think they're going to party. They think they can handle it. They think they can, they're right. Because we hard. I, can have, I, be, I, I live on the east side. I live in the hood. This is hell. Another lie from the devil. 
This is not hell. There is a place. I remember, uh, I think it was Pastor Charles was telling this illustration. He said it was a, a man who had gotten the opportunity to go to this place called heaven. When he got there, he was kind of surprised that he actually made it. He was so grateful. When he got on the elevator with this angel as he was about to go, they were making a descent. And there was someone else in the elevator with him, and that person was let out at the first stop. And at the first stop, there was this green golf course. And there was guys over there laughing and joking, and they had the golf carts, and they had everything out. They were drinking and carrying on. And this guy was like, all right, I'll take this floor. And he took off running. And the angels saw the other guy get ready to go and say, no, this is not your stop. We're going down another level. He said, okay, okay. And so as they descend and they get down to the next level, the next level they were having church. They were worshiping God. It was a great place. It was, it was, like, it was like things, the visions that we envision of conference every time we go. Every time is sweeter than the last time. Every service is that much more powerful. And everybody's praising God and everybody's worshiping. And this is going on and it seems like for eternity. And the guy was standing nearby and he saw the elevator door open. He said, can I, can I go up to that, to that golf course? And the angel asked, why? Well, I just like to go up and, and play a little golf. That's it. That's your choice. And he got off, got on the elevator, and he went back up, and, and the, the door opened, the golf course was there, and everybody was out there, and the grass was green, and he was like, yes! And as he was just sitting there, the angel stopped him and said, you sure? This is your choice? I'm just going to stay for a little while. And he said, go ahead. And as soon as the elevator door closed, all that green was turned into flames. <laughs> now, now he's in pain and anguish, and he's like, hey, I'm not, I don't belong here. But we all have to make a choice. Are we going to follow God's direction, or are we going to go with our flesh? Our flesh wants leisure. Our flesh wants pleasure. But our spirit man wants to praise God. Mm -hmm. I want to praise him. Yeah. We, this man saw a vision. And God told him, I want you to go and touch my servant Saul. I've got some things I need him to go through. He's going to go through things, but he's going to lead. Come on. He's going to lead kings. He's going to lead multitudes out of darkness into Christ to show them the light, to show them the way. And Ananias went his way and putting his hand upon Saul, he says, Brother Saul, oh hallelujah. He recognized this is no longer just Saul, that tormentor, but he is a brother. A lot of people don't recognize this is the greatest privilege to be in the family of God. Mm, amen. I thank God for my brother. That's how we started this thing, isn't it? <laughs> I thank God for each of you guys. Because it's amazing to have brethren to sit with us, to love and, and to encourage us. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that have appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately they fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul was Saul certain days of the disciples at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ. 
Brothers and sisters, when our eyes are open, when we've been strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we got to lift up the name of Jesus. We got to tell the world he's real. He saves, he loves you, he cares about you, he died for you, and now he's alive. And he wants to make you alive too. And when they tell you, I'm good, let them know that golf course is not going to always be there. Mm. Let them know they won't, we won't always have the opportunity to get to that altar and worship and praise God. You got to make up your mind right now. Are you going to follow the flesh? We still got flies. It's too cold for that. How do you get in here? Oh, it turned on the heat. And they got strength again. Mm. Now I'm paranoid. Is he gone? It's gone. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Tessio. My sister. We don't know. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is this not him that was de determined to destroy us? Destroy everybody that called on that name in Jerusalem? He came hither to literally destroy us, to bring us bound to the chief priests. And even though we can see with these eyes what we think we understand, we got to listen to the Spirit of God. Yes. Say that that young man can't teach me anything. That 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 guy over there, he, he he doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't look at the age, don't look at the person. Listen to the word. That's what won my heart. That's what stirred me to my very core when the word of God pierced through this stony heart. And struck a chord in me. So that I came to the place where I was like, wow. Who told him? How did he know this was going on in my life? We got to preach the gospel. We got to give people the truth. In 22 it says, but Paul increased the more and strength. And confounded the Jews which dwelled at Damascus, proving that this was the very Christ. Saul's arguments were so powerful because he was a brilliant scholar. Even more convincing, however, was his changed life. It's one thing, because people knew who me and Lorraine were. They knew the life that we lived. They began to say, Girl, what's going on with you? Because now all she wanted to do was tell him about Jesus Christ. Now she wanted to tell him he changed my life. And some of her girlfriends were like, Girl, you really changed. You really changed. They said to me, you drank the Kool-Aid. I did. I drank the Kool-Aid. Not following man-made things, following the gospel. And you know, even when things got difficult. When things got challenging, I went to the Word. And the Word of God was my comfort. When I didn't understand what was going on, I felt like things was um, out of whack, out of sync. In my church, I felt like something was wrong with my pastor. And I didn't know what was going on, but God knows. And I began to pray. I said, God, help us. Don't you know God can hear your prayers? Yeah. And listen, if Pastor Hicks were to fall by the wayside, where would your faith be? Who are you trusting in? How many know we got to trust God? Yeah. Oh, but Pastor Hicks, I led you to Christ. I didn't lead you to me. I'm a man. I'm subject to fail. 
I'm a man. I'm subject to die. If I die, does your faith die? Are you followers? Paul said, nope, I hope none of y'all say that you, you're a Paul. I'm a Paul. I'm a Apollos. I'm a Jesus. He said, is Christ divided? Our faith has to be in him, not in the preacher, not in the church. It's in the Christ. Amen. People knew that Saul, what Saul taught was real because they saw the evidence in the way that he lived. And it is important to know what the Bible teaches and how to defend the faith. But your life has to back up your words. This is the most important thing we need to get out of this. He said, But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelled at Jerusalem, proving that this is the very Christ. Your life has to prove that you've seen the Lord. You have been changed. And because of this change, you are now lifting up the name of Jesus. Sister Maria, could you close us out in prayer, please? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, God, for the word that you have given us. Guide us to you all the time. And don't let us sight, lose sight of you at mm. any time. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I love you all. God bless you. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Let's have church. Remember the Thanksgiving uh, fellowship potluck. The 20th. The 20th. Look forward to seeing you in the morning. Hey, let's pray somebody gets saved tomorrow too. Amen. God can do it. That's the God that we serve. Yeah. We love you guys. Amen.